In bone calorimetry, what we have is an apparatus in which we can completely combust a sample and measure the temperature that's given off and convert that to energy. On the left side, you see the inside of the bomb where we're going to put our sample. In front of that is a large steel cylinder, and the steel cylinder will house the combustion. In order to measure the heat that's given off in this reaction, we will set the bomb inside a two-liter vessel of water, and that's our stainless steel bucket on the right side with our water. Once we put all of this together, we'll put it inside the calorimeter and then combust the sample. What I'd like to do is illustrate how the bomb works. I'm going to thread just a fuse without our sample into our connections here. If I plug it in to our power supply, then my igniter is right over here. I would like for you to focus on the fuse wire as I press the ignition button. In order to calibrate our calorimeter, we're going to use benzoic acid, which is an industry standard for calibration. First, we need to find the mass of our benzoic acid. You can see that the mass is 1.014. In addition to the benzoic acid, the fuse is also going to combust, or at least part of it. The fuse wire has a mass of 0.012 grams. What we want to do is attach our sample to our fuse wire, and we can do that with the resistance in a wire. So now you see we melted our tablet into our fuse wire. Now we want to load our calorimeter, so we put our our sample and fuse wire into the calorimeter. Now we want to load our bomb. Now we have our bomb with our sample. We need to put our oxygen, and we need to put lots of oxygen in there so we're going to put about 25 atmospheres of oxygen. So this is an oxygen tank, and I'm going to turn the gas on. Next, we want to take our water container, the stainless steel container, and put in exactly two liters of deionized water. And the water is going to be what absorbs the heat, in addition to our aluminum, our stirrer, and everything else. We want to place our container into the calorimeter. Now we're ready to load the calorimeter. We want to take our bomb, attach the wires, and lower it into the water. Now that we have the bomb inside our water, let's think about what's going to absorb heat. We've got water, we've got the stainless steel container, now we're going to add the top. So other things that can, can uh, absorb heat will be the thermometer and this paddle. In order for us to get uniform mixing, we want to mix the water. So we have a little stirring motor here that will churn the water. And the purpose of this is to get uniform mixing. We want to wait about four or five minutes until the temperature of the bomb, the water, and everything that associated with gaining heat is at the same temperature. Now that we've allowed our temperature to equilibrate, 
you can see that the temperature reading is, a, is about 22. In order to read the small graduations, what we need to do is to use a telescope. So we're going to put this right here so that we can read as many significant figures as possible. You can't see this on the camera, but if I look through here, then I can get the exact reading between the graduation. The initial temperature is 22.201. Now that we have recorded the initial temperature of everything in our calorimeter, we're ready to ignite our sample. So I'm going to press the ignition button, and I want you to watch the red light. One more thing we have to do, and that is to find out how much of our fuse did not burn. So we need to take the fuse out of the bomb. And also I'd like you to see what happened to the pill. You see there's nothing there, and there's no ash. There's just a little tiny bit of fuse on each side. Now we need to find the mass of the fuse that did not combust. So 0 0.010 grams of fuse remains. What I'd like you to do now is to take the numbers and calculate the bomb calorimeter constant for our bomb calorimeter.